The Summer Camp from the Black Lagoon Chapter 1 Exile Mom doesn't love me anymore. She's sending me away. She's shipping me off to summer camp for seven days. I've never been away from home for more than seven hours. I've never missed a dinner or spent a night out of my own bed. Mom. Home. This camp is far away, over mountains and through forests. I'll have to eat there. I'll have to sleep there. I'll be all alone. Mom isn't coming with me. Hubby's house. Camp. Chapter 2. Bummer Camp. Mom shows me the camp brochure. There's a picture of a big lake. The one I'll drown in. Or it's hubby. Oh no. There's a picture of a big forest. The one I'll get lost in. Where is Hummy? Oh no. There's a picture of a big mountain. The one I'll fall off of. Where is Hummy? Oh no. Mom says it looks beautiful. If it looks so beautiful, why doesn't she go and let me stay home? I'm so glad I took Hubby's place. Chapter 3 Call of the Wild I'm desperate. I call Eric for sympathy. He's happy. He's going to baseball camp. They get to play baseball all day. They get caps and uniforms. I wish I could go there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Fantastic view. I call Derek. He's happy too. He's going to tennis camp. They get to play tennis all day. He'll have a ball. What a racket. Assistant coach. Good shot. Randy's going to soccer camp. That'll be a lot of kicks. Freddy's going to cooking camp. All he's talking all he's taking is a knife, fork, and spoon. Penny and Doris are going to ballet camp. That should keep them on their toes. Much better, dance instructor. I like chewing on toes. I'm going to a wilderness camp. My only sport will be survival. And with all my friends away, I won't know anybody, and nobody will know me. Ugh. Yikes! I've never seen you before. I'm from page 34. Chapter 4. Pack packing it in. Mom says we should start packing. She has a list from the brochure. We have to take a first aid kit. Oh, great. A flashlight warm socks, a backpack, and a sleeping bag. The list says we have to sew my name into all my clothes. That's so they can identify the body. I wonder if I should make out a will before I leave. I want to take my video games, my computers, the TV, all my baseball cards, and my entire closet. Mom says they're not on the list but I can take my pillow. Now that we're done packing, mom says I should go to bed because we have to get up very early. Don't most executions take place at dawn? Chapter five, bear mare. I can't sleep. I try to count sheep, but instead I count bears, mountain lions, wolves, skunks, coyotes, snakes, Spiders, scorpions, some mosquitoes, bats, an alligator. Finally, I do fall asleep and I have a dream. It's Hubby and the Three Bears.
Mom has sent me to the deep, dark woods to pick berries. I get lost. There are no street signs or street lights. Suddenly, I see a light between the trees. It's a little cabin, just like the ones at camp. I go in. There are three bowls of porridge on the wooden table. I'm hungry. I eat them all. Then, I see three beds. I'm tired. I lie down and fall asleep. Suddenly, I'm woken up by a hairy paw shaking me. There are three bears standing over me. It's Goldilocks, says the baby bear. That's not Goldilocks, says the mama bear, reading the label sued on my shirts. It's Hubby. Let's eat him, says the papa bear. Sleepy hen. The alarm goes off. Saved by the bell. I open my eyes, but it's still dark outside. Rise and shine, shirts my mom from the other room. I hate camp already. Ding, ding, ding. Chapter 6 The Early Worms I sit numb in the car as the sun tries to climb out the night. Finally, we pull into the parking lot. There are lots of moms shoving unhappy kids onto the purple bus that says, Camp Sherwood. Mosquitoes love campers. I sure would like to go home. Mom kisses me on the forehead, hands me my backpack, and marches me onto the bus. Love you. I feel sick. I'm so excited. It's full of sleepy kids with morning mouth. Some are crying. Some have quietly accepted their fate. I'm still hoping for a pardon from the governor. I sit down next to the biggest kid. What's your name? I ask. He looks at the label sued inside his shirt. Jerry, he says. I look at my label. I'm hubby, I say. Pardon deny. Yes, sir. I'll inform Hobby. Straining his neck. We shake hands. You know any camp songs? He asks. No, I answer. But I know a knock knock joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Sherwood. Sherwood who? I sure would like to go home. <laughs> Me too, he says and smiles. Chapter 7 Busted. The driver closes the door and starts up the engine. The mom all wave goodbye as we pull away. I think this vacation is for them, says Jerry, looking out the window. Goodbye! So long! We'll miss you! All signs of civilization slowly disappear. No more buildings, billboards, street signs, fast food restaurants, spotlights, street lights, or neon lights. It's a good thing we have our we have our flashlight. Headed to the unknown. Jerry asks the bus driver if he knows any camp songs. He says he knows one and starts to sing 99 bottles of root beer on the wall. Here comes fresh meat. By the tenth time through we all know the words and by the twentieth time we're driving under an old wood sign that says Welcome to Camp Sherwood, home of the bears. Chapter 8. Buzz Off We all pile out of the bus and line up. I stay close to Jerry. I look around. We're in the middle of eight little cabins, just like the ones in my dream. Maybe this is a dream. Maybe I'll wake up. A guy blows a whistle. Welcome to Camp Sherwood, he says. My name is Buzz. I wonder if his last name is Saw. He's big. He has one eye. We found out later he lost his other eye last summer. I wonder what he'll lose this summer. Saw. I'm the camp safety director and your counselor, he says. He blows his whistle again. 
pick up your gear and follow me. I don't have any gear. I'm on automatic. Chapter 9. High and Dry. Bus leads us to one of the cabins. Go pick a bunk and meet me at the mess hall. Why do they all call it a mess hall? I whispered to Jerry. No talking! You'll find out, he says. And be sure to get a top bunk. Why? asks as we hurry in. Bedwetters, he says, while climbing up on a, tom bat, on a top bunk. I grab the last one. My name is Hubby. I wanted a top bunk. Chapter 10. Out to lunch. We all march into the mess hall and sit down. I still don't know why they call it a mess hall. Then they bring out the food and I figure it out. Bon appetit! Hold your nose. Ish! It's a mess. Mashed everything. Mashed potatoes, mashed peas, squashed squash. The chef must be King Kong. This makes the school cafeteria look like a four-star restaurant. Well, the good thing is, you don't have to cut anything or even chew it. Food. Don't squash my bone. After lunch, it's time to go swimming. I hope we wait at least half an hour so we don't drown. Mom said we have to wait half an hour because we could cramp up. Do fish cramp up after they eat? Chapter 11. For goodness, snakes. We march back to our cabin and we put on our bathing suit. Then we walk barefoot down the lake. There are all sorts of sharp, prinkly things on the ground. Ooch, ooch, ooch. Pine needles, pine cones, sticks and stones that can break your bones, I walk carefully. We get to the lake and it looks cold. Maybe we could go ice skating instead. Jump in, boys, shout boys, and he blows his whistle. <whistles> we just stand there. I raise my hand. Question? What is it? I'd like to know a little about the aquatic life before I leap in, I say. For instance, are there any snapping turtles and piranhas or sharks? No sharks, Buzz smiles, but look out for the snakes. <laughs> snakes? No way, I'm not going in there. Buzz winks with his good eye. In 10 years, I've only seen one. Yeah, well, that one won't see me. I sit down on a log. Yeah, ouch! This log has just as many sharp places as the ground. Uncomfortable. All the kids are splashing around. Looks like they're having fun. There are snakes in logs, too. Maybe I'll take my chance. My chance is in the water. Belly flop! Chapter 12. In the swim. Wow! Swimming is cool. I can swim down to the bottom and open my eyes. It's got a lot more stuff in it than a swimming pool. There are plants and rocks and a little fish. It's sort of like an aquarium. Jerry and I play sudden parrot ship and look for treasure. Jerry finds an empty soda can and I find a rubber sandal. When Buzz blows his whistle, no one wants to get out. We're having too much fun. But it's time to go canoeing. I've never been in a boat before. I hope I don't get seasick. Chapter 13. What's canoe with you? We all line up and Buzz gives us each a life preserver and a paddle. Then he assigns us to a canoe, two by two. Jerry and I are shipmates, and we climb in. Whoa! It's like getting into a hammock. We both finally float down in seats. I'm in the back, 
so we have to steer. But there's no steering wheel. Buzz show us how to steer with our paddles. Cool. Jerry and I decide to paddle along the shore. That way, if we sink, we can walk home. Hey, some kids are going out to the center of the lake. I wonder what's out there. Let's join the other kids. I'm game. It's boring along the shore, so we paddle out after them. Soon we're in the middle of the lake. It's like being in the center of the world or outer space. The sun sparkles on the water like stars. We can't even see the shore. I bet it's deep out there, at least a hundred miles down. Other kids paddle by and splash us with their paddles. Let's get them back. We paddle fast and catch them. Soon we're in the middle of the great sea paddle battle. Keep splashing. Bring her back around, Mr. Jerry. I ain't captain. I'm Sir Francis Drake, and they're the Spanish Armada. We would have won, but Buzz blows his whistle, and we have to come in. Tomorrow we'll have another great battle, but for now, let's just dry off. My queen, I will give you and England a victory. Chapter fourteen, yay, Camp Sherwood. That afternoon, we make lanyards. See a woodpecker, and play volleyball. For dinner, we build the fire camp. Buzz shows us how to start a fire without matches. He says you can use a magnif magnifying glass to focus the sun's rays. This doesn't work too well at night. Jerry wants to try it with his glasses and the moon. <sighs> Bummer. Probably how the first fire got started. Crash! Zap! Ah! Instead, you can strike a piece of flint on the stone. Also, you can spin a stick so fast on leaves that the friction starts a fire. But that takes an hour, and I'm hungry," says Buzz, reaching into his back pocket and pulling out a match. Faster! Soon. We have a roaring fire and are roasting hot dogs and marshmallow marshmallows on sticks. Jerry and I put a marshmallow at each end of a hot dog and call it a marsh dog. Soon, all the kids are making marsh dogs and we're heroes. After dinner, we all sit around the campfire singing, and then when it gets really dark, Buzz tells us a ghost story. Yummy. Tasty, boo! Chapter fifteen, playing chicken. The ghost story is about a mad scientist who takes a living chicken heart and gives it vitamins. Tump, tump. It grows bigger. Tump, tump, and bigger, until it fills up the whole laboratory. Tump, tump. Chicken with a heart. Then. It eats the scientist, which really makes him mad, and the chicken heart tumps out into a night looking for another snack. Tump, tump, no, no, no! Super vitamins. Then Buzz puts his flashlight under his chin and clicks it on, and now it's here! He shouts. When all of our hearts stop thumping. We walk back to our cabins under the stars. Yay! I climb into my bunk. I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want this day to end. I don't want this weekend, this week to end. I wish I could stay at camp longer. As I close my eyes, I hear the night. I hear all the creatures that are lucky enough to be at camp all summer, and I think I can even hear the stars.